What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to do coding challenges again, but this time we're not going to do code wars. We're going to do project Euler, which focuses more on mathematical programming or mathematical challenges. We're going to start today with very easy beginner exercises, and we're going to work our way uh, into more complex exercises as we go on here. Depending on your feedback, I'm going to make more videos like this one. So let us get right into it. All right, so I'm going to do coding challenges again in this video today, but this time we're not going to do code wars. This time we're going to do projecteuler.net. And I don't know a lot about this website. The only thing I know is that it contains programming challenges or problems, but they are mathematical in nature. So this website should be more math focused than code wars, and it should get progressively harder. So these are all the problems here, and I've solved only a single one, which was quite simple. So I don't know what level of difficulty this is going to be. If it's very simple, it's probably going to be more interesting for beginners. If it gets complex quite quickly, maybe I'm going to struggle. So the goal here is to show you my full thought process, similar to the Code Wars challenge uh, series, where I basically just solve problems. I show you what I think about them. If I struggle, I show you how I struggle. If I fail, I show you how I fail. If I don't know what to do, I show you also all my failed attempts. So I'm not going to really cut anything here unless I stay silent for five minutes or something like that. But I'm not going to try to somehow hide my mistakes. I'm going to show you my full thought, uh, thought process and my full struggle here. The rules are basically the same as with the Code Wars challenges. I am allowed to Google, but not the specific problem, but only small things like, for example, how to use a certain uh, iter tools uh, function in Python, or I can look up documentation or small parts of the code, but not really how to solve the actual problem. So the problem solving I have to do myself, but I am allowed to Google small things about the programming language or about functionality of, of a certain package or about the basic concept, something like this. So I think that this might be quite easy today. I don't want to say that too early because maybe at challenge eight, if I even get that far, it's going to be quite hard. But I assume the first couple of problems are going to be quite simple and they're going to get progressively harder. Just let me know in the comment section down below if you like this format. If you like it, I'm going to make more videos like this one. So I already solved the first one, but I'm going to solve it again, or actually I already have the answer here, but this was the first one. If we list all natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of three or four, uh, three or five, we get three, five, six, and nine. The sum of these multiples is 23. Find the sum of all the multiples of three or five below thousand. So let me just show you the code for this one. I think I solved this a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, 29th of July. So I have a directory here, project Euler, I'm going to create a file one.py. And basically what it wants us to do here is it wants us to iterate for actually, let me zoom in a little bit here for I in range uh, 1000. And then we just say if I modulo three equals zero, or I modulo five equals zero, then we want to have a sum or a result, which is going to start at zero, we're going to add to that result, uh, the value I, and then we can print the result. So I think this is how I solve this. Python three, one py, there you go, this is the answer. That's the first challenge. So I don't know about any other challenge. This is the only thing that I've ever looked at. So I don't know if the next one is already much harder, or this is if this is the level of the whole exercise here. So let us just uh, rush through them if they're easy. Each new term in the Fibonacci sequence is generated by adding the previous two terms. Yeah, okay, we know that. By considering the terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose values does not, whose values do not exceed 4 million, find the sum of the even value terms. Okay, so basically, we just need to have a Fibonacci. Uh, let me open up a new file here. 2py, we just need a method for the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, let me just make this a bit larger. Uh, we're going to get the nth Fibonacci term like this, we're going to start with a and b being equal to zero and one or actually does he start with? Uh, okay, he starts with one and two. But actually, it shouldn't really matter, actually, because we are not asked to to compute a certain position. So I can just say that um, I want to have all the even values. So I can say for I in or actually, we can 
we can do this directly here. Fibonacci sum, I don't even need an N here. I can say while B is less or equal to, or what was the exact wording, does not exceed 4 million. So let's go uh, 4 million. While this is the case, I'm going to do A, B is equal to B, A plus B. And uh, then we can keep track of a sum. The results, we're going to start with zero. And we're going to say if B is equal, or actually if B modulo two is equal to zero, result plus equals B. And that should give us, hopefully, uh, actually, I'm printing B. I need to print the result. That should give us what this uh, problem is looking for. So Python 3 2 py result is not defined. Result is zero. Result plus equals B. Oh, yeah, because I need to do that inside of the function, obviously. And I need to also call the function. But that should not be that much of an issue. So let's see if that's the correct answer. And take some time. I don't know if that's yeah, there you go. Okay, so that was not that difficult. Let's move on to the third one. I want to rush through the basic ones in the beginning. I don't know if uh, some of you guys already think that this was complicated, but I want to just go through them until the point where I uh, kind of struggle with them. So the prime factors of this are okay. What is the largest prime factor of the number? Oh, that's interesting. So okay, so basically, we can easily brute force that. So just getting a solution shouldn't be that hard because without putting any thought into it at all, what I could do is I could just get a bunch of prime numbers or all the prime numbers up until this number. Um, and then I could just say, give me the largest one that uh, this number is divisible by. This is not going to be this is not going to be very efficient. But I'm curious to see if that actually even works. So we can make a function is prime, which takes a number. And basically, all we have to do is we have to say for i in uh, range n divided by two, floor division two plus one, I don't know, uh, I think plus one, we should be able to say, if n modulo i equals zero, now, obviously, we want to start at uh, Yeah, I want to start at two, because every number is divisible by one. If that is the case, we return false. And if none of that is the case, we return true. So that should allow us to see if a number is prime. So I can print uh, six, which is not prime. Let me just print a bunch of numbers here to see if that works. I can print 17, which is prime 18, which is not prime 24, which is not prime 29, which is prime. Let's see if that works. Actually, now I'm printing just the numbers. That's not very intelligent. So let's do is prime. There you go. And now let's see what I get here. Python 3, 3 py. Now, of course, I don't know what I actually checked for, but we got two trues, which is for 17 and 29. Okay, so yeah, seems to work. Now, what I could do is, and I don't know how fast this works, but I could say primes is equal to, and I can say um, x for x in range, and then this number to get all the value, or actually just half of this number. So what is the number? It's uh, 6008514751143. And this might actually be a very large number, I just have to divide it by two plus one, maybe here. If is prime x. Now I don't know how fast this can be done. I assume that this is not very efficient. So it could be a problem. But let's see. Yeah, okay, it doesn't solve it instantly. So I think I will have to 
put in some more thought here mathematically. Um, okay, so let, let's just see how long it takes to do that for, let's remove three, not zeros, but three positions here. Still takes a long time. Okay, so this is not, this is not how you're supposed to do that. And it doesn't even work. So actually, even brute forcing it is not that simple. So let's think about this. How can we figure out um, what was actually the question? What is uh, what is the largest prime factor of the number? Uh, okay, so we need to know all the primes, or we need to know. Hmm, that's that's interesting now. So. How would we do it for that number? Now you're going to see that I'm really not that uh, that good with, with the whole math thing. Um, or at least I don't know the answer right away, so I can probably somehow derive it. But uh, the prime factors of a number, it means that when you multiply them, obviously, so when you multiply 5 times 7 times 13 times 29, that this is going to give you the number. Okay, so that's not that difficult. But how do you get that? How do you get... the largest prime factor of a number. Okay, I'm already struggling at problem three. Didn't expect that, but uh, I like it because I think it would have been a very boring video if I would just rush through the first 20 exercises. Um, yeah, so... Well, can you ever know for sure that you found the largest one unless you tried all the possible ones? So let's say, for example, I have a very large number, which is divisible by two and an extremely large prime. So I don't know what an extremely large prime would be, but some, some very large number times two, then of course, that would be the latest possible value that you have to look at to see if something is... Uh, is that actually true? Yeah, I mean, it has to be because if you have like two times something, which is very large, you have two primes to your multiplying, so two prime factors uh, resulting in a very large number. So you would have to check all the primes in between to figure that out. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if I can really derive this myself. So maybe what I'm going to do here to not completely cheat is I'm just going to look at prime numbers. On Wikipedia not gonna try to find a solution directly but I'm gonna try to see if I somehow can figure out a way to to get a pattern here or maybe prime factors prime factorization no, okay these are all calculators but how do you do that um, using factor trees. <laughs> okay, so... I'm not sure, I, I think I have to, I, I think I have to go for some, some inappropriate Googling here, or inappropriate, uh, not completely uh, in the rules Googling here because I'm not sure that I can just figure it out by myself. So I think that I have to admit at least half a failure here. Uh, let's see and let's try to see um, finding prime factors. Keep on dividing the original number by prime factors and get we uh, until we get the remainder equal to one. Prime factorizing the number 30, we get 30 times 2 uh, divided by 2 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Okay, so that wouldn't make a lot of sense because... I mean, can we do that here? So if I go and I say for... For this number here, if I say 13195, okay, it's not divisible by 2, it's not divisible by 3, I can check that with a modulo, so let's go with the next biggest prime, divided by 5. Okay, so I have this number here, 
try to divide it by two, doesn't work. Try to divide it by three, doesn't work. Try to divide it by five again, doesn't work. Then seven works. So we get two, six, three, nine divided by seven. Oh yeah, divided by seven. Then you have 377. You can try to divide it by two. You can try to divide it by three, uh, five, seven, uh, then 11 should be prime. 13, there you go. Okay, so, and then you get what? 377% uh, or actually divided by 13 is 29, which itself is a prime factor. Okay, so it would not be my solution now, but maybe this just works if we just go and say, or actually, do I still have this open? There you go. Um, I could just go and say is prime. And then uh, one way to do that is you get a number or actually, in this case, we need to use the number number is equal to six zero zero eight five one four seven five one four three. And then we're going to print number or actually not print, uh, we're going to say done equals false. And then while not done, we're going to try to divide this by prime factors. So we're going to say for I in range, actually, let's just use the number, it's never going to happen anyway. So let's just go and do it. I can say, if is prime, I check if the number if number percent I is equal to zero, then number divide by I so divide equals I that would mean the number is now yeah there you go and then at some point number should be one if number or actually what was it it was until the remainder is equal to one why is that why would the remainder be equal to one that's not a remainder five divided by five is one but the remainder is not one, or am I mistaken now? Five divided by five is exactly one without a remainder. Uh, but yeah, let's see if if the number itself is one, then print or actually we should say, let's say new number is number divided by i if new number equals one print the number before that or actually i can i don't have to do it like that i can i can just say number divided equals i and if number is equal to one print whatever i was so let's just see if that uh, works for the other number. So if I say number equals 13195, does this already work? Python 3, 3PY, zero division, because we're starting with uh, zero here. So let's start with actually not with one, with two. 29. Okay, and then we should, of course, break, or actually say done equals true. Okay, so it did work for that number. And why is the loop so continuing? Because it should print that number, and then it should say done equals true. And it should also break the inner loop. There you go. Okay, so let's see if that also works for the other number. 6857, probably correct. 6857, 
check and okay now i cannot really take credit for this because i googled at least the hint that i have to keep dividing by prime factors until i i mean i actually got the solution here so this was not really solved by me i need i need to to admit that i didn't solve this one so let's see if i can solve the next one uh let's start with 4py here what's the question a palindromic number uh, reads the same both ways. The largest palindrome made for the product of two two digit numbers is uh -huh. find the largest palindrome made from the product of two three digit numbers. Now again, we could just I mean we could just brute force it. I don't know if that works. I don't know if that's too complicated, but we could say um, four x in range 1 and and 1000 actually and then for y in the same range i could just say result of the multiplication would be x times y and then if the string of result is the same as the string of result uh, the other way around that's a palindrome, so we could print it. I'm not sure if that makes sense though. Okay, uh, what was the question? Find the largest palindrome made from two three digit numbers. Uh, so we should start at 100. And then we should go and say results or palindromes equal to an empty list. And in the end, we want to say, give me the max of palindromes. We need to, of course, append everything here. Okay, so that should be, this is not the max value though, is it? Let's just not print anything here. Oh, we need to print that though. That is the maximum palindrome that you get from three digits and This is correct. Okay, so this wasn't hard, but I'm not sure uh, when it comes to these problems if there is a mathematical pattern that allows me to do that in a in a simpler way. So yeah, I mean this is just brute forcing. This is just calculating all the products and then taking the largest result. This is not really yeah too too interesting. But let's see, uh, do we have some some solutions here? I don't think so. All right, so let us move on to the next one. Uh, what is that actually? Oh, okay, so this is actually now a PDF explaining the solution. This is nice. Let's see what uh, the solution is here. So we have reverse is palindrome okay he basically does the same thing it's it's really yeah it's it's actually the solution so i'm interested in this one though probably it's the same solution we used <laughs> factor two last factor one yeah it's basically the same it's like pseudocode but basically the same solution uh and these here are probably also Yeah, just summing it up. Okay, so it seems like that's actually how you're supposed to solve it. So I struggled with this one because I didn't didn't know that this is how you get the prime factors. Um, or maybe I did know it at some point, I forgot it. But this one is literally just trying. So let's go to the next one, smallest multiple. 
2520 is the smallest number that can be, div uh, be divided by each of the numbers from 1 to 10 without any remainder. What's the smallest positive number that is evenly divisible by all of the numbers from 1 to 20? Mm. Well, for that, wouldn't we just need to think about what kind of numbers already imply that you can divide by the other number? I mean, wouldn't this just be the product of primes? Because if I have something divisible by four, it's also divisible by two because two is already inside of four. If I have something divisible by 16, uh, I know it's divisible by 4, I know it's divisible by 2, I know it's divisible by 8, I know it's divisible by, uh, yeah, by all these things. So I'm not sure if I'm, I'm thinking about this in a wrong way, but wouldn't that just be all the primes up until 20 multiplied. So wouldn't that be uh, 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 9? No, 9 is not a prime. 11 times 13 times 17 times 19. Wouldn't that just be the result? I'm not sure. It's just my intuition now. I don't know if this is complete garbage, but could that be the case? No, okay. Uh, why not? Let me just think about this. Uh, Python 3. If I have this number, it's divisible by 2. It's divisible by 3. It's divisible... No, it's not divisible by 4 because it has to be divisible by... <laughs> no, okay, so this was the wrong approach, but I think that we still have to consider numbers that are already part of other numbers. So if I know, for example, that a number is divisible by 16, I don't have to check for 2. I don't have to check for 4. I don't have to check for 8. If I know it's 15, I don't have to check for 3, 5, and so on. Um, and because of that, I should just multiply all the numbers. Now, let me just do this maybe, or should I do this pro uh, programmatically? Um, so think about it that way. One number that's definitely divisible by all of these numbers is this one here. So this one times 10 times 11, I'm gonna just write all of them out here. Uh, was 20 included? Yes. So, I mean, obviously it's not just all the primes because then 20 is also not included, but um, in this case, what can we leave out? If I multiply something by 4, 2 is already part of it. If I multiply something by 15, I have 3 covered. If I multiply by 16, I have 4 covered. If I multiply by 5, oh, by 15, I have 5 covered. If I multiply uh, with 18, 6 is covered. If I multiply... 14, I have 7 covered. If I multiply by 16, I have 8 covered. 18, I have 9 covered. 20, I have 10 covered. 11 has to be covered separately. I mean, isn't it just that? Now, I'm just trying before I think too much about it, but... Okay, wrong. But why? If I have these values, hmm. I mean, there is actually a simple approach to do that is to just go for the smallest, uh, what is it called? I know what it's called in German. I don't know what it's called in English. But you have like the greatest common denominator and then you have the other thing, which is the smallest common, what is it called? Smallest common multiple. Is it that in Python? How do you get that? Um, 
yeah, LCM, least common multiple, or what, what's the least common multiple? Isn't that the function that we just have to use here? Do we not just have to say import math and then, and then uh, math.lcm? Uh, Python math LCM. Does it take integers just as values, right? So we can just say here a list of range from 1 to 21 because the last one is not included. And then print that. Wouldn't that just be the answer? I don't know if that's cheating if I if I just use a uh, we need to unpack that. I'm not sure if that's cheating if I just use a built in Python function. But that should be it, right? I mean, isn't that the definition of what we're looking for? Yeah, so let let's just see if the PDF has a different approach. So what do we have here? Given the small size of, um, of the parameter k equals 20, this problem can easily be solved without any programming as it's equivalent to finding, finding the least common multiple, yeah, of this set of integers. Um, however, the analysis will lead in a different direction with the aim of developing an efficient algorithm capable of solving for larger values of k. Okay, so two, three, four, two times three, two times three times two. We can see that for K, yeah, okay, obviously, because the two is already part, yeah. Uh, yeah, so applying this principle, how do we solve this programmatically? Let PI be the i prime, no, prime number, okay. Let N equal first prime to the power of what's a a is what is a Am I stupid or is A not defined yet? Initially, let AI equal zero for all I, okay, for J equals two to K, write each J in the form and set, what is B? Is B just just another value? Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, spend too much time on this one now. Let's go to the next one. I think I'm gonna do the first ten problems today. Uh, it seems like they're not as trivial as I thought. So let's go. Problem six: The sum of squares of the first ten natural numbers is that the sum the square of the sum of the first ten natural numbers is that. Okay. The difference is that, okay, find a difference between, okay, this is not difficult. So all we have to do for this one here is we have to say, uh, what was the thing? We want to square all the numbers. So we can say sum squares is equal to sum of i squared for i in range 1 to 101. And then square sums or square sum is equal to basically the same thing. I or not the same thing. I for I in range one, one, one. And then this whole thing squared. So taking the sum of that, we need to use parentheses here and then taking that to the power of two. And then we want to just print what exactly the difference between the second one and the first one. So square sum minus sum 
squares. I mean that shouldn't be that shouldn't be that difficult. Pretty sure that this is correct. All right, so this was easy. Let's move to the next one. Seven. By listing the first six prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13, we can see that the sixth prime is 13. What is the 10,001st prime number? Okay, do we just have to again iterate to it? I'm, I'm always not sure if I have to find some, some smart pattern here or if I just have to go through the prime numbers and count them because that's not that hard programmatically. I'm not sure if this is... Uh, no, this, this should actually be, I don't know, this should, shouldn't be too hard. So wouldn't it just be I have counter equals zero and then I say four, or actually I can say number equals two, and then I can say four or while true, or actually while counter less or equal to thousand or actually while it's less than a thousand and one I want to say for I in range two up until that number half so in the case of two it doesn't make a lot of sense I mean it does because I can just say two divided by two plus one, that would be just two. Or what does even be two? I'm not sure about that. Let's just add plus two here to be safe. Um, and then I'm going to say, if number modulo i is equal to zero, continue, or actually break. And otherwise, Go on and on, say counter plus equals one if we don't break. Well, actually, the problem is if I break, I have to use the infamous for else statement here because for else basically means if we don't break out of the loop, I'm going to run the else branch. So in this case, counter plus equals one. And in the end, I want to print the number. And the number has to increase by one as well, no matter what happens. So the number has to increase by one. Um, yeah, so wouldn't that work somehow? No, this is definitely not a prime. This is definitely not a prime. Yeah, but probably the one before that, right? So it's just because I add, uh, wouldn't that be the answer? No, okay. Uh, let's see where I ran went wrong. So if I find, I started with two, right? So actually, let, let me see what happens if I do that for six, just to see if I get the correct answer. So the six prime, is 14. Okay, so first of all, we need to do the following thing, we need to do number plus one before that. And I think we need to start, let's see if I do it like this, I'm probably gonna get 13, but I need to do it um, starting at one. Or actually not because this leads to even more problems. So what's the problem here? Uh, do I have to do less or equal to six? Yeah, but now I get 15, which is not a prime, so. Mm. Let's do last prime. Let's 
see if that works. <clears throat> 15 is not a prime. Why is 15 a prime? What's wrong with my coat? Uh, I go... So 15. If I get 15 here as a number, it goes into the loop and says, okay, oh, okay, of course. We just say number divided by 2. Okay, 19. 19 is... Isn't 19 a prime? Oh yeah, 19 is a prime, but it's not the 6th prime, so... Actually, this was correct. Okay, I, I, I messed this up. 17 is also a prime, so I have to actually start at 1. There you go. Okay, so now it should work. Let's see what happens if I go for 10,001. Now it takes some time. The question is, does it take too much time? No, okay. But I'm still not sure if that's the way I should solve this. This should be correct now. Um, but let's see what the PDF says. I'm interested in that. So let's go to progress. Let's go to problem. Or actually, let's go to archives. And then let's go to the PDF of this one. Is prime. Okay, so what does it, does it say? We do not know what answer to expect, so we will try to solve this problem using trial division. However, if a good upper bound for the target prime is known in advance, using a sieve of Eratosthenes is a much more efficient method. Some useful facts. One is not a prime. Okay. All primes except two are odd. Yeah. All primes greater than three can be written in the form 6k plus minus one. Any number n can have only one prime factor greater than the square root of n. Any number n can only have one prime factor greater than root of n. Okay, that's nice to know. The consequence of prim primality testing of a number n is if we cannot find a number f less than or equal to uh, the square root of n that divides n, then n is prime. Okay. The only prime factor of n is n itself. Okay, so this is uh, seems to be a more intelligent approach. I mean... Probably for these kinds of exercises, it would be good if they use larger numbers. So they basically force me to have to come up with a more intelligent solution because in this way I could just uh, I could just go through all the numbers and, and get the correct result. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next one. The four adjacent digits in the 1000 digit number that have the greatest product are nine times nine times eight times nine equals that. Find the 13 adjacent digits in the 1000 digit number that have the greatest product. What is the value of this product? Okay, now, wouldn't that just always be, without even thinking about the product, wouldn't that just always be the 13 largest digits or the, the, the 13 digits, 13 adjacent digits with the largest sum? Wouldn't that always be the correct answer? So if I take this, copy paste it, 8.py, let's say the number is equal to, let's use it as a string here. Uh, not like this, come on. There you go. Now, one way to do that is to just go through all the digits and to say uh, four, how do we do that? We say four I in range length of number minus 13 
we can say print or actually not print we can say take the the digits which is going to be number from i to i plus 13 turn that into an integer or actually no uh can't, what happens actually in python if i say something like i have a string like this and i want to split it based on nothing does this empty separator but i want to actually split them how do i split numbers just by position how do i just get the individual positions i can iterate over them but okay actually let's do that then so i have the dig digits and i can say the sum of the digits is sum of int uh, x for x in digits that makes sense digit sum is that and then I can say largest sum actually what's what are we looking for largest sum is something now if I'm gonna do sum because sum is probably easier to calculate than product for the computer so largest sum is going to be equal to zero in the beginning I'm gonna say that the digit sum if the digit sum is larger than the largest sum then the largest sum will be set to the digit sum and um, I also want to know digits gonna be none in the beginning I'm gonna say digits is gonna be equal to yeah actually best digits is gonna be equal to digits and then in the end I want to print best digits not sure if that works uh, but let's see I mean this is okay yeah I see the problem if we don't use product we get zeros so we actually have to use product directly largest product and now here we're gonna say uh, is there something like multiplication uh, Python multiplication function list I mean we have numpy product we have reduce I mean reduce does work so let's go and say import func tools um, or actually from from func tools import reduce and then we have here the list and we just apply lambda expression onto list okay so we say reduce and we have the list here and the lambda expression is x and y x times y yeah because this is then applied for all the elements digit product digit product largest product digit product and largest product let's see if that works and it gives me that let's see if that's the correct answer should be I guess no okay are these even 13 digits so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 okay so they are 13 uh, what's the problem then oh I didn't actually enter the product that's the problem I entered the digits the product is this Okay, so it was actually correct. I just uh, pasted the wrong thing. Okay, so two more for this video today. Um, and let's go. Um, 
a Pythagorean triplet is a set of three natural numbers, a smaller than b smaller than c, for which a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, there exists exactly one Pythagorean triplet for which a plus b plus c is equal to a thousand. Find the product. Okay, so again, first thought immediately, as always, is the brute force solution. What would it be? You go, C can be, um, let's think about this. Do we have a, an intelligent upper boundary? I mean, A has to be less than B. So B has to be at least one, even if A is zero, and then C has to be at least two. Um, but that doesn't make sense for the triplet. I mean, we just have to go, let's say, 4C in range. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's go in range 1000. 4B in range. Actually, it doesn't really matter if we if we go to 999 or 1000. But actually, I mean, yeah, it does make a difference because obviously B is going to be less than C. So we don't have to go to 1000 because B cannot be more than C. So C is already the upper limit. But also, it has to be larger than A. But I cannot consider that now. So let's just say up until C and for A in range up until B. If A to the power of 2 plus B to the power of 2 equals to C to the power of 2, um, and if A plus B plus C is equal to 1000, print A, B, C. Let's see how that works. Okay, this takes quite some time. So, oh, actually, we already got it. So then all I have to do is I have to say 200 times 375 times 425. And if there is exactly one, that should be the answer, right? Perfect. All right. So last one for today, problem 10, the sum of the primes below 10 is 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 is 17. Find the sum of all the primes below 2 million. Oh, this is now I think uh, I'm too bad with primes. So I don't know if I can do that one because I think that the brute force approach doesn't work. I think we tried that Actually, let's see if it works, but I think that this is going to be too much. So if I say def is prime again, as we had it before, and then if I say 4i in range 2 n divided by 2 plus 2, so it's like that. If n modulo i is equal to zero, then return false, otherwise return true. I think that that is that that is too much for two million, but I'm not sure. Let's say print p for p in range what was it? Four million? Two million? Two million. If is prime p. I think this is not going to be feasible. I don't think that we're going to be able to do it like that. But meanwhile, we can take a look at the PDF again that we had from before in case this doesn't work because 
uh, I want to see if I can solve this with um, with the knowledge from from this year. Okay, so my GPU is very loud right now, or my CPU actually very loud right now. Let's just see how fast this works. I want to know if n uh, n modulo a thousand equals zero print n just so I can get some of them. Okay, it's mm, it the, the problem is that this gets more and more complex over time. So it gets slower the larger the numbers grow because when you have a prime you have to go through all these numbers. So no, this is not gonna Actually I would like to know what's the runtime complexity of runtime complexity of prime not prime factoring but prime finding a prime number is o of square root of n okay um is it because of the content of the pdf let's see so what is not prime this is not prime so what do we have here the consequence for primality testing of a number n is if we cannot find a number f less than or equal to square root of n that divides n. So, okay, this is, yeah, this is why it's obviously an O of square root of n because I don't have to go to this here. I can just say math.sqrt of n plus one. But is this so much faster, actually? Load cannot be interpreted as an integer. Okay, this is much faster. This could actually easily go to 2 million. There you go. Okay. So with this new piece of knowledge that I now have, I should be able to easily answer this question. Oh, actually you want to have the sum. So I didn't think about this. So actually print the sum of all the primes, not just the last prime. Okay, this is much, much faster. So that should be our answer. Let's see. No, okay, this was not correct. Why is this not correct? Uh, come on. So that's the last one. What's the first one? Maybe that's a problem. Okay, we don't have it here. Maybe the problem is that I'm missing two or something. So... Let me just, let's do it like this. Let's say primes are equal to this. Print sum of primes, but I also wanna know what's the first prime. Just to make sure we have everything in the list. Okay, zero is the first prime. I think the problem is, of course, yeah. That's the problem. So we want to start at two. Two is the first prime. And now we have the sum here. That should be the answer. All right, there you go. So it was definitely more challenging than I thought. Uh, I would say that the one that I really failed is problem three. All the other ones, I think I succeeded at least somewhat, um, even if it was not the most elegant solution. Problem three, I didn't know how to, to approach it. Um, but yeah, I learned something new that you can actually find out of a number's prime by just looking up until the square root and that the runtime complexity is thus O of square, uh, square root of N. And yeah, 
So I personally enjoyed this format. If you want to see more of that kind of content, let me know in the comment section down below. And that's it for today. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.